Okay, perfect. Hello, everybody. My name is Anissa Boulahia. Okay, <laughs> that's <Okay>. said. <laughs> Boulahia. <laughs> for the Arab speakers, it's easy. For the others, get used to it. Um, so I'm originally Algerian, raised uh, in Niger, West Africa. So it's not Nigeria, it's Niger, where this dress is from. So please admire. Um, I've, I've, uh, I have a career in banking. And uh, recently, I uh, created my own um, uh, venture called Turnkey Family Office. And I'm, uh, I'm very proud also to introduce you to Raymond, who is my uh, right hand for Turnkey Family Office. So we are a corporate service provider and a financial advisor. And uh, we help uh, a lot of families to come here in the UAE, settle in the UAE open their businesses in the UAE, develop their businesses from the UAE, and also invest with us because we have different uh, investment funds uh, and we propose investment screening. We screen opportunities for you. So that's what we do in Turnkey Family Office. And on the side, I have a restaurant that I co-own with Bemi. I think a lot of you know Bemi. So the restaurant is Catfish uh, DXB. And I am co-curator of Africa Avenue with beautiful Taimi and beautiful Suetal here. Um, and we have also a table outdoor if you want to have a look at what we do at Africa Avenue. And that's more or less it for me. So today, um, William asked me to talk to you about financial um, planning. So I want to make it very simple because I think we only have 10 minutes. And uh, after that, if you have any questions, you can just uh, come to me and, and ask me. So uh, why financial uh, planning and why business plan? A lot of people will tell you it is to raise money or to uh, bring um, other people to the table with you. I personally take it as an exercise to clarify my ideas and clarify like the tons of things we have in our head and the tons of ways we want to do things. So it's really um, a, a clarifying exercise that you should all do whether your business is already existing or whether it's a new business that you are thinking of and that you want to develop. So to make it short, I'll, I will really go directly if you allow me. I, don't, I know you don't allow me, but I will <laughs> allow myself. I would like to directly go to um, the discussion about uh, the business plan and I would like to talk to you about one um, business plan strategy that I really like that is called the Canva. I think you're all familiar uh, with the Canva, and it's uh, actually nine blocks. I don't know if you all can see well. If not, I can send you the presentation afterwards. It's really like nine blocks that you have to think about when you're thinking about what your business should, should look like and, and um, how you should uh, go about it. So uh, the first block would be the customer segment. So you need to know who are your customers. Um, and of course, we start small and we plan on who are our customers today, who are our customers tomorrow, in three months, in six months, in one year, etc. So my advice, like now that I've run uh, three totally different type of businesses, my advice when it comes to the customer segment is to be uh, a bit shy about it, like a bit conservative about it, because we tend to want to sell to everybody and it doesn't work like that in real life. So I would advise to really like be as conservative as possible to start with and then you can uh, grow your um, business segmentation later on. So here you have an example that is given, but you can ignore the answers and you can put your own answers depending on the business you are thinking of. The second thing you should be thinking about is the value proposition. So what do you want to sell and what is it different from what is out there in the market and why anyone would want to buy that product and that service. So we call it also unique value proposition. Uh, and every one of you needs to think about why is my product or my service sellable and why we would want to acquire it and, uh, and so on. Then uh, we want to uh, think about what are the, the channels, how we are going to distribute that product or that service. Is it online? Is it physical? If it's physical, under which form? Then the geography, is it like local? Is it international? And so on and so forth. So of course, it will depend on your product first, but it will also depend on many other things like your strategy, like also what you are willing to put into it, etc. Um, by the way, I'm, I'm giving that this is very theoretical, but if you look on the internet and I've put here a link that is really, really, really good. I don't know if all of you can see it. It's called the powermba.com. And if you visit the powermba.com, you will find a lot of examples of Canva and maybe you will find one that is uh, very close to uh, what you are 
uh, thinking about. So after the channels, you want to uh, um, think about the customer relationship, which type of uh, relationship you want to uh, put in place with your potential customers or existing customers, and then which activities you have to roll out to um, deliver what we have thought about so far, what are the key resources you will need, and that's really, really, really important because I really thought until very recently I could deliver all by myself because I'm a woman first and because I have superpowers <laughs> second, but I, that's totally uh, wrong and we really need to think very early about um, what are the key resources, who are the people we need, what are the technical qualities they, these people need to have, how we're going to recruit them, how we're going to form them, etc. Because without that, I think we run all um, uh, straight to burnout um, stage, if you know what I mean. Um, and then something that I also very, really neglected myself when it came to my uh, business development are the key partners. I always was thinking that I start and then I will find uh, the partners that will come along, the suppliers, etc. So I can take the example of the restaurant Catfish. Uh, that's, for example, one of the main mistakes we did when we started. We didn't think enough about this. And when you're developing um, African food uh, and also healing African food, like healthy, balanced African food in Dubai, you can face a lot of issues when it comes to supply. And even more with the COVID and with the, uh, the the travels with Nigeria being locked, etc. So the idea was to list all the potential suppliers we could have, and also not just one supplier per product, but potentially like different suppliers, those who can deliver us online, those we have to go and look in the market, and maybe it's in Sharjah market and not in um, in Dubai market because we cannot find it, etc. So really like. Uh, making a deep analysis of who are, for example, the suppliers that you will need, but not, not only suppliers, because in partners, you don't just have your suppliers, but you have tons of other partners. And just to give you an example, in Turnkey Family Office, we are the partner of a lot of businesses that are just starting in Dubai. And for example, what they value in us is that they can trust us, that we are knowledgeable, that we deliver on time, that, and so on and so forth. And these businesses we work with, are mature businesses in other geographies. So their owners and, and the families behind them, they have that knowledge. So they will come and they will kind of like try to find out who is Turnkey Family Office, who's hiding before, behind Turnkey Family Office, how they will render the services. And so they will do like this due diligence. And you as business owner, as entrepreneur, as uh, people who want to start a business, you also need to do that due diligence on all your suppliers and your um, key partners because they can ruin what you have created if that's not done uh, properly. And uh, once we're done with this top part, we have to think about the bottom part, so revenue stream. So I like to say something about catfish. I like to say I'm not in the business of making food, I'm in the business of making money. And I say that to my teams because I explain to them, you are in the kitchen, you are preparing, so you are in the business of making food. I am in the business of making money. If I don't make money, I close and we are all... Uh, home uh, watching Netflix, right? So that I try to explain to them the difference because they see me as the financial monster like running after them and trying to <laughs> make them either work more or save more and they don't really get it. So uh, that's always what I say and it's very, very important to see first the revenues. So a mistake a lot of people would do is that they will plan their revenues function of their needs or function of their dreams. Uh, which often are two different things, and both uh, situations don't work. So you have to um, think about revenue function of what is possible, depending on everything else you have worked on on the top. So uh, there are different ways to um, kind of plan budget your revenues. There is the what we call the, the reality test. So you go around and you see people who are in your sector, what they are doing, etc. I um, promise you there are so much data, there is so much data available out there, maybe less in the UAE because we're not yet that mature as a market, but in other jurisdictions for sure. And here I want to give you a little tip. In the UAE, we don't have access to all these platforms with data and examples. And for example, here we don't have to um, make public our balance sheet as an existing company. So 
the new joiners cannot just go and look and so on. But I have a small tip that I use for myself and that I would advise to anyone is that get yourself an accountant as early as possible in the process and pick an accountant that has in his portfolio businesses like yours. And create a relationship with the accountant, a trust relationship, and try to get the data from him. That's what I did for Catfish. I really didn't know where to go and look for the information to build my business plan. And then I went to a friend of mine who has a restaurant and I said, hey, who's your accountant? So he gave me his accountant name. So I went to the accountant and said, how many restaurants are you managing? Oh, I'm managing 20 restaurants. Okay, would you, without of course stating names or giving confidential information, would you be able to help me um, see the trends and so on? So of course this, um, this um, accountant, he has restaurants that are in Marina, he has restaurants that are um, in GLT, in GVC, so he could give me, he could tell me, oh, this restaurant is doing much better than this one, this one is facing this and this type of issue, etc. So what I couldn't find readily available on the internet, I found it onto building that relationship with the accountant. So that's something I would really advise to anyone when it comes to the reality uh, testing. So that's the first um, way you can estimate potential revenues. The second way is the survey. So go out there, like this type of branches, for example, you can come with a, with a questionnaire and you can go around and uh, ask people to answer that questionnaire and then it would give you an idea on how much they would pay for your product or how much they, pay, they would pay for your service and so on and so forth. So that's the, the survey, survey technique. Uh, the third one would be the um, analysis of what is the market and what's the share you want or you think you can get in that market. So you estimate the size of the market for that product and then you say like, I will target 5% of them, uh, that market. So to get the 5% of that market, how many client it means, what type of revenues it means, and that would allow you to um, also estimate revenues. And the fourth methodology is um, the test. So you start, you start your business very, very small, like for example with an incubator, and you go out there and try to sell that product in a test phase, and then after three months, you can sit and work on the revenue stream. Okay, so there are four techniques. I, I've been a bit quick in, in detailing them, but again, if you go on this website, uh, I think the website is available also in all languages you want, uh, you will find um, um, much more uh, details on these four um, techniques that we have to estimate the revenues. Okay, and uh, the final one that, um, that you need to think of is the cost structure, of course. So uh, the cost structure, we tend to minimize it because we tend to think that we can start with very little money and so on and we tend to minimize it. And my, my advice is to really like try to think about all, all, all the types of uh, spending you will have to do and try to be really, really realistic about it. So I'll give you an example. You think about the license cost. You're like, oh, I saw in internet, it's 5,000 dirhams. I can set up my license, I can start right away. First of all, if they are advertising so much, there is an issue, you know that, right? So, so and, and it's also not about the license, it's about your immigration card, your labor card, the visas you will have to do, the health insurance for your employees, and when you are estimating the cost, are you thinking about the holidays that you need to budget because holidays are being paid? Are you thinking about the flight ticket that you need to pay? Because, you know, all of these things, we tend to say, oh, I'm gonna recruit one person, it's 4,000 dirhams, so this is my uh, provisional cost. No, you need to really go deeper, 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 because the miscellaneous, the things you haven't thought about, are going to represent the biggest part of your cost budget, okay? Um, same, for example, offices, we have a lot of different solutions. We say, oh, but now we are working remotely. Yes, we're working remotely, but when you're thinking about the cost of your business, you need to input some of your electricity, some of your uh, rent, and so on and so forth, because maybe you won't be always working remotely and maybe even if you're working remotely you need a space to gather in with either your clients or your uh, your employees and by the way from my experience it's much 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 um, striking and lead converting to meet with your clients in a very nice environment and a very nice office that's really my experience i wasn't believing in it i was like more of like oh let's just go out and uh, have a coffee in that um, 
a restaurant or let's just meet at home because I'm very like, you know, uh, relaxed about it and so on. And I've been told by my mentors, don't do that. Take yourself a very nice office in the AFC and pretend you're a very rich person. And I, jo I really laughed to that because I was like, no, that's not my personality and so on. But seriously, it converts much, much, much more clients. So you have to think about that when you uh, think about your business plan. And uh, of course, your product as well. So for example, today you have a product that is ready for the market, but you need that product. You know that that product will need to be developed will need to evolve, will need to be transformed, will need to adapt to the competition and so on. So that's also something you need to think about in your cost structure and so on and so forth. So uh, I think, uh, I think, I <laughs> yeah, no, uh, we're okay, I have two minutes more, one minute more, yeah, yeah? okay. So uh, what I want to say is like, this should be a whiteboard, right, with, with just like these nine categories. And you should be with your post-its and you should like think about everything and then put it there and there and then move them and move them and move them and move them. And trust me, you never get it uh, right the first thing. And you get, even when you start your business uh, three years down the line, you will also still be changing things. But for me, I find that this is an extraordinary uh, exercise to um, structure your business because we need structure all the more when we are young entrepreneurs and we are just starting. Structure is what actually will save us and my last sentence would be I hear a lot of people working for three years on this no that's not the objective waiting for the right moment waiting for the business plan to be perfect and recently I read uh, that sentence that uh, perfection is an illusion so don't don't wait for the illusion just start even if you start very small and uh, look for support amongst us Retail Television. We are telling live.